Hey y'all, it's Laura and I am back with Scrap Timber Day 15. And today we're doing patterned paper backgrounds and I am choosing to use quite a bit of patterned paper on this layout, I think. Now I'm looking at it, no I didn't, just these two. <laughs> It's been a little while since I did this layout and just getting around to doing the voiceover. And I have a Valentine's Day kit that I put together really early this year and never went back to. I did a couple of layouts with it a handful that month and then never seemed to roll back around to it. And I saw it sitting up on my calyx, just chilling, and decided to go ahead and pull it back down and just do a few more layouts out of it. I do like to have multiple kits on the go because I get bored really easily, and so I do flip back and forth between multiple kits and collections at one time. Uh, at the moment, I think I have about eight different collections in little bags under my desk just to make them easy to grab and reach for because for scrap timber I want to mix it up a lot just to keep myself motivated to keep myself interested and excited to make things and if I'm using the same kit every single day I'm going to get bored really quick and I'm going to struggle with the creative process. So my craft room is a bit of a mess at the moment is what I'm trying to say. <laughs> But this layout turned out really super cute and it's using a lot of older stash, which I think some of you will appreciate. <laughs> this uh, striped paper is from Chamel's Glitter Girl and I believe that the spotty paper in the background is one of L Studio's old ones, but it matched really well with the stripe. I'm going to be doing a bit of layering with some cardstock. This is a great way to break up busy pattern papers if you're layering them together. Put a little bit of cardstock or pattern paper that reads as cardstock, as in it's just one color uh, in between the layers, and that makes it a lot easier to use multiple patterns on one layout. Because I have had a lot of questions about that one, and really that's the easiest way, is to separate the busy patterns with either very soft, subtle patterns or with cardstock. In this case, I'm using two layers of cardstock to frame this striped paper because this is going to hold the focal point and the majority of the embellishing for this layout. So I decided to kind of create a stage for my photos, which seem appropriate because my daughter is playing with a Barbie doll and letting her imagination run wild, which I adore. I love that. I had lots of Barbie dolls as a kid, and so I kind of love that at least one of my girls finds them interesting. Now, they're not thrilled with them, but they, they do pick them up occasionally to have a play. So I am mixing two main collections in this kit. Uh, it's been quite a while since I showed it to you guys, so I'll just a little reminder. It's Chamel Glitter Girl and Crate Paper Hello Love. So some older collections, not old, but older collections. And then I threw some other bits and pieces from my stash in there as well. There's a little bit of L Studio. Uh, there's a little bit of Pebbles. There's a little bit of this and that. <laughs> there's, it's just a lot of lovey themed things. And so I just kind of lumped them all together to see if I could use them up. Because a lot of them are old Valentine's Day collections and are very specific to Valentine's Day. And I don't really scrap Valentine's Day in particular. Just because we don't normally make a big deal out of it. Occasionally we'll go out to eat. Occasionally my husband will buy flowers, but not always. Quite often we ignore it. And <laughs> it's just, it's not a high priority in our household. And when you're as busy as we are, it's just, it's not a big deal. But I like a lot of the hearts and the colors of these Valentine's Day collections, so quite often I pick them up when they go on sale and then have to get a little bit creative in making them work. Now, these little photo corners here are from Chamel's Glitter Girl, and they're the last three photo corners that I have from this collection. And so I really wanted to get them used up, and I thought this was the perfect opportunity to do so. And I never use these the way they're intended. They have a little pocket on the back of them that you're supposed to just slide in around the corner of your photo. And I don't ever like the way that that looks. It creates a weird gap and I don't love it, so I just tear off the decorative piece on the top, remove the pa the back, which is a pocket of sorts, and just glue them directly onto the photo. 
<laughs> I just think they look better that way. Eventually though, I will move the ones that are on there and I'm going to put them in a diagonal from the bottom left up to the top right. And I really, really like how that works. because I only had three left. I'm not sure how I managed to get down to th an odd number like that. It, really not sure. I have to have used one on a layout somewhere. So they're all used up now. Very, very glad to see a packet of anything getting used up in my stash because that's quite rare, let's be real. I have a bunch of these little fussy cut florals that came from a Pebbles Valentine's Day collection and I pretty much just sprinkled them in between my two clusters. I end up with one cluster on either open area of the stage and then another down at the bottom, but it's just a very typical layout for me, honestly. It's kind of a modified grid. It's very much within my style. I think the colors are beautiful. So this, this one isn't anything wild and adventurous. I've done a lot of experiments this month, uh, really challenging myself in a lot of ways. And it's nice to come back to something like this that is very clearly my style, that is very clearly my color palette pinks and teals and purples and you know it's just absolutely beautiful and I did get quite a few chipboard pieces on here as well but I should note I pull all of the back backing off of my chipboard I do not leave it thick I break it down to just that top layer that has the image on it and then add my own adhesive and stick it down like ephemera I just do not enjoy the thick heavy chipboard piece very much. And honestly, anymore, I rarely buy chipboard. It's got to be a pretty awesome design to get me to buy chipboard in the first place. I would say frames is the main reason that I buy chipboard. And even then, I tear them apart. So I have this title, Love. And I believe this came from the crepe paper, Hello Love. And it does get used. It does get to stay as the title. But I decided to put it down here at the bottom on this piece of paper as kind of a footer. I felt like this bottom half was very empty and I wanted a place where the title could kind of hold its own. And I thought it would be nice to do it with this little strip of paper here. I do really like this stripe and I've been hoarding it. I have two pages of it. I've been hoarding it like crazy because it's beautiful and it has all these gorgeous colors in it. And so I decided, nope, we're not gonna continue to hoard it. We're gonna go ahead and cut into the second piece of paper just to get the colors I wanted. Can't tell you that was a little bit painful, I must admit. And then I decide it needs a little bit more of a presence there at the bottom and to match the way the stage has that navy border, I decided to bring in a little bit more navy cardstock to create a border for this piece at the bottom as well. Give it just a little bit more presence and tie it in with that top section so that it looks intentional. It looks like it was planned. <laughs> it's never planned. I rarely plan anything, let alone a scrapbook layout, but it looks planned and therefore I love it. I love that it looks like it was intentional. It looks like it was prepared to happen. And uh, I like when that happens. I like when I can make it look like that happens. So that title will shift on down to the bottom and get a little cluster of its own. And I do end up adding quite a bit of journaling up into that little purple tag at the top right. I love when tags have journaling lines on them. That's so convenient. And it's just easy. I take every opportunity to put something that has journaling lines on it already added in so that I don't have to figure out where I'm going to squeeze in journaling lines when I get to the very end of the layout because I never remember to prepare for it at the beginning. Now, before I forget, we do have two amazing guests today. The amazing Hannah Lamo, who does awesome mixed media layouts. Love, love, love her work. And the darling crafty Maggie, who is someone whose videos always makes me smile. And she just posted one the other day that had me absolutely chuckling. I could not stop laughing. So I'm really glad they could join us in Scrap Timber. And don't forget, of course, to check out Katie and Jess over at the Scrappy Sisters, my Australian friends who are joining me every single day for Scrap Timber with new videos. They are amazing. Some of the layouts they're putting up filled with mixed media, filled with cut files that they're backing. I have to have taken them forever to make. <laughs> so definitely check them out as well. But this layout, I love. It's just 
beautiful. And I, I just have been staring at it for a while and, and just enjoying its, its loveliness because it's like a return to your roots, a return to the things that you love, picking in all the bits and pieces that you love from a collection and putting all of them onto one layout. I have to say I was quite proud of myself for using that giant camera though because that is something that has kept me a bit mystified how I was gonna use that for a very long time. I've had that one in my stash just kind of staring at me. I love it. It's beautiful. Has a little heart on the lens, which is adorable. And I've wanted to use it. I've wanted to use it. And finally, I found a layout that I could use it on. So I have to say, I was quite proud of myself. <laughs> and just generally happy that I could get it used. And out of my stash. Because let's be real. Otherwise, it would have gone back into my stash. Because it's so just so cute. Now this is a 9 by 12 layout. If you're new to my channel, which I have a lot of new subscribers, thank you for joining me. I do 9 by 12 for my twins albums to make them more accessible for them. They are uh, they were slightly preemies and were a little smaller, a little little smaller on the size scale and it's easier for them to flip through a 9 by 12 than it is those big giant 12 by 12s. And so I've saved the 12 by 12s for our family albums and for my older three kids who love them, but for my little's I have smaller 9x12 albums and they really, really like them. They can pull them out, sit them on their lap and look through them and they do that all the time. So now that I've gotten everything glued down through the magic of editing, you didn't have to watch all of that. I'm going to bring in these little citrus twist enamel shapes to sprinkle all around the page, adding one or two to my clusters everywhere. This is what I call scattering and it's how I end every single layout that I make, adding these tiny details that make such a huge difference in making your layout feel finished and making it feel polished. So I always add little scattering pieces around my clusters and then I'll come in with both Nuvo and Heidi Swap Color Shine for my splattering. So scattering and splattering is just a little rhyme that I made for myself to remind me to finish off my layout with these steps. I compare it to adding in the fine details on a painting. Yes, you've gotten the background, you've gotten the bold color, you've gotten pretty well-defined shapes, but until you put in those final details, you can't add the depth to a layout. And I think this really, really helps. So this is my pattern paper background layout for Scrap Timber. I will be posting it in our Scrap Timber Facebook group. And until next time, bye guys.